Hey, we've gone through most of the basics for, for using custom code in Runrix, and now I'll take you through some common mistakes that are used with, uh, or that I have regularly seen when people try to create custom code for Runrix. Um, so first one is no reporting. Um, so some pieces of custom codes do some lengthy operations and there's no reporting whatsoever. So while running the test, it can kind of look like the test is getting stuck or something's not working because you get no updates in, in, the, in the little screen that's uh, showing you the status of the test. Uh, also in your report, in your final report, you will see you will not get any indication of what happens during the custom code. So preferably, we've seen uh, when looking at the code that's auto-generated by Renrex Studio, that each step has some logging added. Preferably, when you write custom code, you try to do that also. Um, for the, this presentation, I'll use the getAlarmCaller uh, function we've seen before. And I'm going to try to take it from probably the worst possible version to a fairly good version. I'm not going to say it's the best. It might be so, some additional optimizations possible, uh, but in any, in any case, a much better version. Okay, so first version of our get alarm caller has no logging at all and the second version here, some logging is added. So at, at the start of the function, we say what we will be doing. We will be getting the alarm caller for an alarm row. And then once we've retrieved the caller, we're going to also output it to the logging. So we're going to say alarm calling, alarm caller is, um, yeah. So the, the value of the background color that we've retrieved. And then uh, in this case, the function will also return this background color um, to uh, whichever method was calling this function. Okay, second common mistake is using get pod. So Renrex has a get pod function built in. And what does that? You can basically throw elements, containers, uh, whatever, adapters at it and it will return to you the pod, which is quite handy because uh, maybe you can like uh, add something to the pod, change something to the pod in code, and then search for that item again. But there's a catch there. Um, the get pod method is by default using the same methods that um, RenderXPy will use to, to find items when you do some tracking. And we've noticed that with Data Miner Cube, it can produce pretty slow paths. So, so instead of taking one or two seconds to find some item, it can grow up to one minute, sometimes even more. So your test will become pre or can become pretty slow when using get paths. Um, there's a couple of workarounds. Uh, probably the easiest one uh, is using path build mode dot simple. So that will force the get path to log or to uh, return a path with every single item in the path. So every single step of, of, of your visual tree. Um, so there's no skips, no question marks, no, no double slashes in the path that will be returned, um, which makes it very efficient. It's fast to find. Um, it's not very robust, but we've already tracked the item and now we're generating a path for it. So basically when you're doing this in custom code, there's no need for that path to be robust. Um, so Using the pod build mode simple um, will make you um, or will return a fast working pod to you. Uh, another thing to know is that 
getPath will in fact internally do a search. So it will first search the item and then produce the path from it and then return that. Um, so whenever you're doing a getPath, if you're having a runnerx path that's already maybe not fully optimized, where the search is taking a bit longer, doing a getPath on that, you will again do that search. Uh, so it will again make your test longer. Um, so next to do to the path build mode simple, there's in many cases e even better ways to work around it. So if you have um, repo item infos um, in your methods, you can use the path or absolute path of that. No need to do a get path, you already have it in that object. So no need to do some extra calculation CPU cycles on it. It's already there, it's a memory. Um, the second method that you can often use is searching within the existing element or existing path. So um, let's take a look at the, that optimization. So what was I doing previously? Um, I have a container here, so a container element called alarm row that's coming into my method. So some other function has already done a search for that and is saying, hey, can you get the alarm color from this alarm row? So a first search has already been done um, using perhaps the, the, the element name of the alarm or something like that. Um, and then here we are using the get part, doing a search again. Then this part we are creating a runner X part by doing a concatenation. So we are saying get the part and then create a runner X part string with this bit added. So I want to get the element uh, with automation ID alarm console severity border so that that's the the icon of my alarm and then i'm doing a find on that item again so in fact for this function this is my third search action i'm asking from runner x and then um, i'm retrieving color from it using the attribute and returning the attribute so we can make this more efficient. Um, how do I do this? By using the existing element to search. So instead of um, assembling, getting the part, assembling the part with, with an extension and then doing a search again, I can replace this by doing, using the alarm row, so the container or element um, you already have. And doing find single. Um, in this case, I'm I'm returning a WPF element, but that could be an unknown or an element, uh, whatever suits your case. And then I'm searching for this runner X part within this row. So I'm searching for instead of searching through my entire UI tree for this. Um, for this icon, I'm saying, hey, from this alarm row, search within this alarm row, search for the icon. So that's a lot faster. And I'm reducing from three search actions to only two search actions. So I'm reducing my number of search actions and one of the search actions will be much faster because I'm only searching within a limited area of my um, visual tree. Okay, so then last two lines are just the same thing, uh, reporting the alarm color we found and also returning it to the color of the method. Okay, then the third common mistake is searching the same thing twice or even more. Um, so I've already mentioned the get alarm color. Um, so Basically, that's the same thing as on previous slide. So from getting a part, which does a search, doing concatenation, doing another full search, I can reduce it to doing 
a limited search only within the row. Uh, the next thing we can do, or the, the second example here, is with the menu items. Um, so I, ha I found this case where this was the original code. So med menu item was received, retrieved, and then after that, it's doing a find single again, but the path from the menu item once again, and then adding the cliff panel inside it. It's doing two searches. This first one does not return anything at all. It's just using the D or creating the menu item object, which was I, d I don't have the full code here in the presentation, but it was not used any anywhere down further in that method. So this is doing a search item, which uh, for, might be lengthy, and it's not using it. It's not using the result. So what can we do to optimize this? Um, is we do the search again. But then for second part, we use this menu, the first menu item, so the result of the first search, to search only within that info item, and then go find the uh, part of the glyph panel. So once again, we've narrowed it down from our full um, visual tree to only a small part of it, and we're going to search within that small part. Um, so that will again uh, produce a performance gain. Um, so when trying to, or when you're writing custom code, it's easy to just add lines, add lines, do finds, uh, but always think that every find um, takes time for the Renorex engine. So um, use them wisely. In this part, we took a closer look at the auto-generated C-sharp code that is generated by Renorex Studio. We've also created some custom code to create our own functions. I haven't covered all the possibilities of the custom code, but I hope this uh, gives you a good starting point to go and explore yourself and find out more about the, custom what the possibilities of the custom code. Next time, we'll take a look at pushing our solution back to Git and setting up Jenkins to run our tests automatically.